enjoyable game hmm. i'll have to check it out good old time how do we have sound i think we have sound Pardon? i mean do we have sound so uh, sargarath do we have sound yeah, we got sound we got sound i did it right amazing he Hello. did it right is this the I first show you've ever actually gotten the sound work properly at, or no no i've done it once or twice before in the last eight year eight years nine years Ten years. What no, is not time? Long. We're only at eight and a half years, David. Okay. <laughs> well, I, it's it's hard for me to remember because I've known Cass eight years in November. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Sorry, Sarah. Um, my mic was just... about five miles away from my face. I found the pictures from uh, my the first time I came to visit you in Ottawa, and uh, yeah, that was like, yeah, the like 
first week or second week yeah first week i think of december yeah in 2015 hey darsh i don't know who we are Um, i mean my name is shiver no you're in the car this time huh wow look i'm on top of things my name has been restored (laughs) uh god i don't have to know anything about this game anymore (laughs) Look, I want to start by apologizing because we've missed uh, a couple of weeks, four weeks, um, but because, yes, Sargareth, uh, I have moved into a new house. I am now in a new house. Um, a brand and new I house. Am a brand new house, and I am so bloody tired. I'm just... The I'm owners dead. are really pissed off, but you don't have to let them in. The problem is they like they just won't stop knocking. I'm trying to just sleep. Tell me you're Catholic. That works for me. Oh no! One of my favorite Simpsons episodes when when the Simpsons have their house stolen from them. It's I amazing. I lived in my previous house for about six years, and we never got a single Jehovah's Witness at the oh. door. And the How first did you live week, in this time warp? The first week we had this house, they came. Of course, because you said you were Catholic. You, you are now wealthy no. because you live there. No, I I <laughs> was like, no, I'm good, thank you. And they were like, all right, and they left. So I was like, all right, fine. They'll be back. That that was and nice. Greater numbers. Yeah, but I'm I'm next time I'm just gonna open the door and say, Hail Satan. Oh, that, that doesn't good. work either. That means that they think they can save you. If you go with the atheist route, same thing. Going Catholic is the only... No, going Catholic and saying you're excommunicated. Those are the only (laughs) two ways to get rid of them. That's a good one. And if you say you're excommunicated, they will fucking run. Because they're not allowed to talk to you. Uh, Uh, You could say you're excommunicated for hailing Satan. That's that's a good one. Uh, (laughs) Darge, it's it's not a new house. It's from Um, 2006. uh, But the basement is completely unfinished. So I get to... I get to get, finish the basement. He gets to be creative. I get to play. Where are you um, going to hide the bodies? Well, the great thing about a concrete floor is at some point I'm going to finish the floor. So until then, I can hammer in the concrete, bury them underneath, refinish the concrete, and then put, you know, normal flooring over top. Be be careful when you do that, because if you put bodies in wet concrete, it tends to create a bit of a like a pocket, so it's not as stable. Yes, as the body rubs uh, away. Darj, you can probably see a bunch of the power tools over there. Uh, I'm working on building my workshop there. Um, it's a large basement. How are you going to build a workshop when you haven't got a workshop? <laughs> I'm going to work on it. How did they build it? the first workshop? <laughs> What came first, the tools or the shop to build them in? <laughs> oh man! So I apologize. I hope you all had a good that, July. Yeah, I hope you had a good uh, last couple month. Last month, uh, I apologize that we weren't around, and uh, we're back. Just like we said, we'd be back. It's not we're the first back. or the Except least that or the week most. Was four, but it's fine. Stop by pushing E to open your inventory. Fair. <laughs> you punch a tree with your hand. Yeah. Um, oh. Seems legit. Okay, so what do we... What do we... Does my audio sound better? We're going to talk about this week's biggest game release, possibly of the year. Dave the Diver. That's that been was released, released this week? Like, no, it was released like last month. Okay. Shut yeah, up. <laughs> Your joke failed, Shiver. <laughs> Sorry. God, I will only make factually accurate jokes from now on. <laughs> That's right. Um, oh, man. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to open a beer. And for anybody who's wondering, yes, I am playing Baldur's Gate 3. Not like at the moment. I thought it would be rude to play while we streamed, but 
up leading leading up to now and after the show <laughs> i i will say i'm actually really disappointed um jake has been streaming baldur's gate uh, but they've streamed it at times when I've been doing house things every single time, and I haven't yet been able to watch Jake stream it, and I'm I'm disappointed because I need to tune into that at some point. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh. There is. Darsh, I will say there I'm is sorry. a distinct lack of boulders and gates in that game. There are boulders. <laughs> And there are gates. Uh, are there three boulders, there or are there more than three? There are many more than three. So, yeah, they, uh, Unplayable. They, uh, they, they undercounted badly. <laughs> unplayable. Um, All right. What have we missed in Star Talking Citizen? Talking of unplayable, this week in Star <laughs> Citizen... <laughs> nice segment. Um, actually, I watched a... I watched a Star Citizen Live this uh, today. Oh, yeah. Um while I was doing the uh, the clips for two weeks ago's show. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was one of those uh, the live developer ones where they, like, make a thing on stream. It was a props artist, and he made a box. And it was a pretty cool box. It was, um, it was a first aid kit, and it had a med gun in there and, a, like, a bunch of the vials for uh, to put in the med gun. And... The thing was, like, he made this thing in an hour, and he made it in 3DS Max. Yep. It looked great. Um, it was animated. Um, he, he had latches on it. It opened, and then the, like, floor lifted up and then tilted forward to, like, display the items to you. Nice. He made this in an hour and imported it into the game, and it worked. <laughs> Fantastic! It's cool. just like I was like, "Holy shit, dude!" <laughs> well, they've got a lot of props that they're gonna have. To, well, that they have to make, right? And oh, thousands, yeah. I I think it's another case Whoa. of like uh, they were actually talking about it a little bit in one of the ISCs. Was it this week's or last week's? That like we only <laughs> see four total underground facilities right now there's only f like yeah. four different ones they have many more 70. and they have the 70 right they've got yeah. and they've got the stuff to make many many more I, and make them all individual they just but they buried been... that information though underground in the facilities <laughs> I do think that they have a bit of a problem with having two different things in the game, both called underground facilities. Yes. They really need to fix that. One of them New underground facilities and new new underground facilities. Yes. <laughs> uh, are we talking the new or the new new? <clears throat> well, I don't... I Like, there's an underground facility, and then there's, like, the underground complex. That's way better. That's what they should use. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> Can you open shops underground? Because I want to make one called the Velvet Underground. Good question. I would actually guess... I guess, that, probably... I guess everyone's a bit young for that reference. I'm sorry. I know it's a thing. I've heard of the thing. I have no They're idea. They're a band, the are they not? Is. They were a band, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My question is... You may not get it, but your parents are going to really dig it. <laughs> UGF. Underground facility. Is underground not all one word? It is, yep. Okay, so it should be UF and UC for underground complex. Underground facility, UF. Yeah, they're it's not enough. exactly... It's not a UGF. They're not exactly breaking new ground by having a, you know, a weird acronym. feel like you dug for that one. Oh dear. <laughs> Shovels. <laughs> oh, oh god. Shovels. Um, <laughs> anyway. Shovels. Shovels. I just want oh. like I I feel like 
we're probably going to have the same sort of thing with props as we are having right now with um, facilities of like they have a lot more that they haven't shown us just because they haven't imported it and they haven't put it into persistent universe because there's a limit on what they're putting in the persistent universe because they don't want to stress things out while they're trying to sort out PES. But hey, hey Alex, um, and hey, North End uh, from earlier. But I feel like, again, and I've, I've said this a bunch, like they're, they're fighting a lot of tech problems, especially with the switch over to PES. And I think that the game is actually quite a bit further with like locations and facilities and props and items done than we see. Yep. Agree. Well, you can almost, you could tell even just by the size of the team. They're probably producing a shite ton of hmm. of uh, content. Um, yeah. I think uh, Jared said Jared said they're now at like thirteen hundred. I think or fourteen hundred, which Man. is huge. Baldur's Gate three was made by Larian by Larian, and they had they increased the size of their studio to four hundred people. Keep in mind, yeah. Baldur's Gate Baldur's Gate is. Um... It's unfair, and it can't be used as a comparison to other video games. Um, <laughs> that was such bullshit. What a bunch right? of wieners! Oh what my a... god! Oh, Did you... oh, shiver! What? Um, a bunch of a bunch what? of other video game developers uh, put out like articles or like spoke to stupid online news people, and were like, you know, you can't compare. Baldur's Gate to other video games. It's an unfair comparison because basically reasons. it's too good. We can't make games that are that good, so please don't compare us to them. Yep. That was what they were oh. saying. They're like, it's okay. they spent way too much time and way too much money on it. Don't please don't compare us to them. <laughs> or just make better games <laughs> but the um uh, this sort of links in with um the mm -hmm. most recent inside star citizen really but it it, it 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 ties in with the entities as well that the fact that they spent so many years just making tools to be at this point where they can make a medikit in an hour <laughs> and put it in the game in an hour it's well quite to be achievement. clear to be clear they're not there yet he made the thing no. it wasn't fully working um he said it probably would take him normally like a day or so to to make that's an a heck of an improvement yeah you know and then mm. you know the ship teams are able to churn out a new ship a hell of a lot faster and larger oh, yeah. ships yeah. it's it's interesting yeah, that tr we true dodge very simple mesh that's very true that's that's fair that's true so it's it's interesting that we say that but i would be very interested in like a year by year comparison. Um, thanks for the follow. Um, oh, that's hidden by that. So I couldn't actually. Anyway, um, it would be very interesting, I think, to see a year over year comparison from like early in the project for how many ships were announced in that year and how many ships were released. Uh, too flyable oh that exists somewhere i'm sure it does um uh yeah megabase there's we're not very ukrainian we're just su we support ukraine in all that's still unfortunately happening um yep <sighs> Um, yeah, I don't, I, I'd be interested to see that, uh, sort of map of when, how many ships came out per year and like, if we're actually getting more ships a year now, or if it's slowed down at all. Cause I, I feel like we don't get that many new two flyable in a year. I feel, feel like it's like four a year, five a year of new flyable ships, but I could be wrong. I'm just... Yeah, but they're also churning out bigger ships. You know, rather than just single seaters. Yeah. I, well, that's not true either. They are still churning out the single seaters because they sell, but they're also selling 
um, or working on more multi crew ships. I mean, we're still waiting for the merchantman at the moment, but the fact that they're looking at it. Yeah. I don't know. I think it'd be an interesting uh, an interesting breakdown to see. Mm. That's all. Mm. I like and breakdowns. The, I mean, the whole sea, just the, even the tech involved for the whole sea, having a telescopic lens is fucking yeah. insane. And wasn't that tied with the physics grids? And I cannot imagine how much of a fucking pain in the ass having a physics grid that's meant to be. So the ship's this big, but... <laughs> And I mean, they went so above and beyond with that ship. Actually, allowing players to be in the spindle as it's expanding, they is, didn't have to do that. <laughs> they did not have to do that. That that is definitely going above and beyond. That is impressive. Okay, so I'm gonna move us over to uh, to to watching the last two weeks um, videos. We're starting with uh, the very, very early, and it was mentioned about 400 times in the episode, that this is a very early prototype of salvage. Um, uh, specifically ship munching. Yeah, yeah, ship munching. Morning, JJ. Um, this, is, this is early to the po point where they never sh show things this early, basically ever. Mm. It has no art, no gameplay, <laughs> yeah. they're faking all of it but it does show you a basic idea of what, where they're going with uh, the their thought process but it's i think it's actually really interesting i i love seeing stuff this early right mm -hmm. and i think it's really interesting to see where their thinking is at on how they're gonna do this mm -hmm. um because it seems clear like they are not even thinking about as far as i can can tell um uh let me just do that um what was i saying as far as i can tell it doesn't even seem like they're thinking about doing a like uh oh no it, it, you didn't miss anything, Darge. It was, I was quick. I was on the draw. He was actually. I was. I was quick. Um, we we had talked about um, what's the name of that fucking the one where you cut everything apart. Um, hard space oh, shipbreaker. Like, uh, hard hard space shipbreaker. Yeah. We had talked about, like, are they going to do something like that in Star Citizen? And it seems, from this at least, that that's not what they're looking at. Which is probably good. Yeah. Um, I was hoping for it, but I was also thinking the whole time that I was hoping for it, that it was very likely not feasible, because you'd have to basically allow players to chop up ships in whatever pieces that they felt like which is uh, difficult when that isn't your entire game. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with what they're doing. I think they're right, though. Like, it was really interesting to see them talk about what they've learned from this early prototype and, like, what they have to fix and the server problems of spawning so much stuff are a big problem. I think there's actually ways to solve that, though, but um, they'll figure that out. I thought it was really interesting, though, of, like, how are they going to disguise taking this big chunk and turning it into a lot of little chunks that can then be munched, right? We, they really don't know, because they're, they're, this particular experiment you'll see later in the episode failed. So, yeah. they, it's, it's basically, yeah, they're trying, they're in the, they're in the, like, we know what we want to do but we need to figure out how to make the gameplay to make that happen you know hmm. um yeah it's um and how would they disguise it probably with some kind of, like if you they still do something similar probably with some time some kind of like a like destruction graphic gfx that play um while the game is loading all in all the chunks yeah <clears throat> 
I still think there is a bit of wiggle room left for you know much larger ships. I mean, that's mm -hmm. uh, six. Uh, is it the eight ninety or six hundred? I they've got it's on there. The eight ninety jump. It's the eight ninety. I can't tell from the ass. But it, it's got that <laughs> wiggle room there, where if you do come across, this it's got some wiggle in the ass. Wreck, you could. <laughs> I'm trying to make a real serious point. <laughs> Other than that, you could try and make a real serious stuff ass. by hand to the ass. Y if yes, yes, you enter in through the ass, and then you extract the things by hand. That's what I thought. But it, it, it has got that room for, you know, if, if you haven't got a reclaimer to actually be able to salvage at least some of the stuff in there for some value, and then hope that no one's going to use the reclaimer on you while you're inside the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, nice. I do really like this. So they basically what they're showing here is they loaded this server down. So the previous test that they showed was not even in a multiplayer environment at all, like not in a server environment. It was just local. Um, this ain't any jump test is um, on uh, is in the PU on a server. Um, then they loaded the server down to like massively. Basically, they loaded in every. Um, Every, Every landing uh, zone. La landing zone simultaneously to load the server. <clears throat> um, just to see what would happen. And things start going seriously snaky. So this is the whole point of the test. And mm. it's great. I'm just like, my thoughts are we saw them try and do it to basically an entire 890 jump section. And I'm wondering if they might find a way to just like that section was huge for a vulture to break apart. It feels yeah. like it should break that apart into more and then break those apart and then be able to only turn it into the million things when it gets, you know, down down to the very end. Um, and Darsh, oh, yeah, God. I hang, hang, hang on. Surely th that is not god no they're not surely vulture will not be able to do that yep. to an 890 sure that was just for test purposes this is yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely it is absolutely. but the the no, vulture will just the vulture will probably eventually be able to eat an 890 yeah and it'll just take it a ton of time or you'll have to have multiple vultures right I don't, yeah, yeah it won't be able yeah. to do that to the vulture to to no. uh to yeah, uh, I, I don't... I don't think you're going to be able to solo something as large as an 890. Probably even a constellation well, might be pushing it with a vulture. Well, basically, the problem you've got becomes someone they... who's going to go to and fro. Yeah, basically the problem becomes. They actually have like a little segment about this in here, but like the problem with the vulture is you run out of space in your ship yeah. long before you ever are even contemplating, um, like how much of the 890 you've t you've uh, destroyed. Like it's. Vulture is just not a very big ship. So well, the, but hang on, because the problem isn't even just that you run out of space in your ship. The problem is that every time a new container comes out, you have to get out of problem. your seat. Go and I, I really think that that's not a good gameplay decision. I think they should change hmm. that by default in the Vulture to maybe you have to turn around to a different terminal and then you can use like an interior grapple or an interior track that's, that's really to idea. move them, right? But you what shouldn't if, what have about to get out of your seat. If that's What about if that's base level Vulture straight off the factory line, that's what it is, but you can buy an upgrade or something like that so you can that would be so cool. Yes. I like that. You, you, you install the optional, uh, optional, yeah. um, brain Internal attachment. Yeah. Your, yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. There's definitely some, uh, some David friendly scenes in this episode. Oh, it's uh, great. I love it. Uh, the reclaimer gets, uh, some pretty cool, uh, bits in here. Um, so one of the things that they were showing here is, um, and uh, obviously it's not fully captured by our videos, but when they did try to break apart that one section of the 890, it was supposed to shatter immediately into all the pieces like the first sh test did. It took, I don't know, several minutes, probably. I think it was like five or six minutes before it actually did it. So that was why they basically deemed it a uh, 
<laughs> not viable. They'll find ways. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's just, this is, that was the whole point of this test was to go, okay, is this path forward, you know, even remotely yeah. doable? Yeah. No. Um, <clears throat> and Darj, I agree. The vulture should only be able to munch stuff that fits, but similar to, like, a prospector being able to use, like, um miney things right mm -hmm. to to like destroy like your, a larger uh, rock i like your terminology miney things yeah um thank you the prisoner the thank you prisoner thank you so much um i feel like you should be able to do it in a vulture it shouldn't be easy it shouldn't be the most economical use of your time Right? Uh, yes. Yeah, swap out the salvage beam, cut it down, then manually go outside, reswap the beam to like, like you'd have to cut it down so that you can munch it. But you should, you should still be able to salvage anything in a vulture. What I want to see. Sorry, go ahead, Trevor. What, what if, right? Smaller pieces are worth less. So, yeah, you can still do it with the vulture, but you've got to cut it down to size to fit, first of all. But you're also damaging or be you know, lessening your intake, which is why it's, you know, a good idea to aim for getting the reclaimer. Or just yeah. eventually, oh. if you have a reclaimer and you've your group is salvaging, you've yeah. got the vulture in there just for the small pieces, you've got the reclaimer for just the big pieces, and then you can maximize efficiency and profit. How excited were you to see the claw? I wasn't, honestly. I like and that. I know you're not gonna. I know you're gonna like not not believe my my problem here is they like it's nice to see them trying to figure out how to do this in the vulture. It's great, and I love that they're trying to figure out how to do it. It's very clear that they still don't know what to do with the reclaimer or its claw because the claw doesn't really fit with this gameplay that they're designing to be honest yeah no this is this was yeah yeah well they weren't keep in mind they are not designing gameplay that's not what this was about this was that's this true. game this none of this was gameplay there was no gameplay put in here Sorry, at all. It, but it doesn't work with this prototype solution because the claw isn't yeah. designed to break things down it's designed to hold on oh, to things that's why they that's why they yeah. showed it grabbing bigger pieces yeah i know it's yeah. just the I claw mean, I, right... I would imagine as well that the claw can have another use of uh a small enough derelict ship that you're like you know what that, i'm not going to break that down i could get more money for that as is or scrap it for parts on my own or that sort of thing Ooh. and then you just pick up the aurora as you want and go and david's well, that... definitely going to be using it on ships that still have people on them um, absolutely yeah. <laughs> but we don't know yet, like, that makes sense if the Reclaimer can grab pieces and then... It, the Reclaimer's claw oh. needs to be like an elephant's trunk. It needs to be able to grab a piece and then feed itself, in feed yep. that piece into the Reclaimer's oh. munchers. Yep, that's absolutely oh, that's what it needs horrible. to be. that's horrible. What? Yep. That's like, I don't exactly know why. What it needs I had, to that's do. horrible, but I love it. <laughs> I need yep. to be able to grab an Avenger and slowly feed it into the munchers while the pilot is is, is in there hammering on the, on the yeah. cockpit glass yeah 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 and i need to be oh, you know over some, the comms there's, there's gonna be some truly great horror made in star citizen yes <laughs> oh man dark david yes, is a dark weird david, david. That, that that form of Dark David was why he got added to our organization <laughs> many years ago. Many years ago. <laughs> oh, man. Um, still one of the greatest things I've ever written. Oh, it's amazing. Love that story. Um, yeah, so this, I'm really, this I, really, video here... I really love them. Go ahead. 
Uh, just this video here is like it took about 20 minutes and this is the the stuff finally spawning in. But yeah, it, popping in. it took a long time. Yeah. Uh, JJ, do not go and read Garbage <laughs> Woman. Or do. Or do. <laughs> but but oh, don't. Uh, it's not, it it's not as easy. Fear. Yeah. It's not as easy to find anymore. Oh, we should put it up in the site. It'd be super easy to put it up there. Should we have a site? Yeah, we do. We don't use Still? it. We have Why? <laughs> <laughs> we don't use it. Yeah, this is um... this to me is funny. I mean, again, we still have to see what the reclaimer is actually able to do. The reclaimer, <laughs> the reclaimer is one of those ships that was clearly designed before they had any idea what they were really going to be able to do in the game. Oh, absolutely. Um, because can you not like like are you doing damage to this ship here? Or are you just just like someone <laughs> someone, you know, parks their ship on the pad, right? Like they, they park their ship on the pad, you fly in, grab it very gently with the arm, lift it up, and just move it like two pads over, and then leave. And they never know. That'd be a great prank. I've never very I good at the done... claw games, so I. Uh, mm. But holy shit! In fans, uh, no, no. This ever Hang happens, on. and there's a guy that's just walking away from a reclaimer. How do you miss a fucking reclaimer that close to you? <laughs> Hang on, because I've just invented the next uh -oh. Star Citizen competitive sport. Claw game. Once the claw works, you get. A bunch of different reclaimers all against each other and you've got a person maybe on a vehicle running away from them and whichever reclaimer can catch the person in their claw and lift them up and take them away wins that sounds horrifying for the person <laughs> <laughs> my god <laughs> <laughs> uh, point. You know, ah, points, yeah, points, points, the racing. Points are awarded based on re reclaimer racing would be great. Yeah, it's not what you I think. No, 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 no. What you do is you just line up in a wide enough ravine, a load of reclaimers, and wait for the people who are racing to come by and see which one of the claws is going to get the racer. That's the winner. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that. See? Yeah. I wonder if you could like oh, man. This tunnel's really weird and mechan oh fuck. <laughs> I think they're gonna have like rope or anything, because it would be great to be able to like get a bunch of reclaimers and like string a rope between them and like tie it across and, and I don't know. How strong do you think rope is? Very? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. You must do it. It's space rope. Space rope. That's right. Space rope. It's it's like okay, it's yeah. like the, the ship glass. It's space glass. It's made from unobtainium. Yeah. Made from the they use space rope to make the same thing that they make space pants from. Yeah. yeah. Probably also the thing we need to find f figure out in order to make a space elevator. Is that what they call a space plot thread dodge? Sorry. What if you took a reclaimer and you grabbed onto the front of a hull C and the hull C was extended and then an aurora was coming at you and you swung the hull C with the reclaimer and <laughs> your aurora uh, no. <laughs> one minute in the left field. <laughs> Spaceball. <laughs> then I really like that idea. Uh, I know it's a great idea. You get a home run if you knock him into the sun. <laughs> oh. Uh, wow. <laughs> Dar 
Dirge, don't even ask. <laughs> don't even ask. That's a very good question, Dirge. <laughs> oh. Did you like my naming of the videos? Yes, I did. Good. I did. Oh, this Ooh. video is big now. I got to resize it. There we go. So, Lisa. the other video, uh, the other ISC, wow. I guess that's, I guess it's this week's ISC. This week's ISC. Um, yeah, talked, I think we already talked about this, but anyway, it talked about Rastar and how Rastar has been, is being updated a little bit. It's very cool. They, the, um, I'm not sure if everybody caught the mention here. But Rastar is going to be exposed to the players at some point to build bases. Mm hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> this is the same tool. It's, pretty, it's a pretty elegant solution because yep. one of the things that I know gets on Wait, wait. In, uh, Hang on, which one's which? Up? What do you mean, which one's which? I don't know. There's a Russian troll in the YouTube, and I'm just trying to figure out which one of us is the dwarf, which one of us is bald pedo golem, and which one is fat boy. And I can't, I can't tell. I'm, I'm bald pedo glumna. Glumna? Aw. Glumna. I kind of like, I kind of liked that one. <laughs> glumna. Do we tell them at what, what point do we tell them that we do actually give money to the Ukra Ukraine charities and things like that, or do we just let them go for it? <laughs> Well, I think we just I let them think, go for it. I don't it. think that person has anything All to right. do with anything. <laughs> just a troll. But yeah, anyway, it, one of the things that annoys me in games that does allow base building or just basic building buildings uh, is the fact that sometimes you find this nice location and the terrain is never responds and it just looks a bit out of place. And it's not a major thing. But you, when you notice it, it's just one of those things you look at and you think, ah, oh, uh, but this is really nice and elegant solution and the fact that it's all being done i know this was done in the tool and it was done um not in game but it was it was really nice smooth elegant solution and uh seeing it in players hands is going to be great uh yeah why is it that's a very why do they call it a drive when you park on it a drive what? when what what is being called a why do they call it a driveway when you park on it that is a very good question. And even oh, worse, I've started even it. worse, a parkway is somewhere where you drive, not park. <laughs> I think they got their words screwed up. English sucks. <laughs> oh, man. I do love the terrain. It, they've done such a nice job on the terrain. It's such a weird thing to pick out, I know, but the terrain's lovely. Are they parallax textures, or are they... I don't know what is above a parallax texture. I'm sure someone does, but they're really nice. What's a texture? Uh, I... They are. Okay. Thank you, Dash. I, I knew you'd be the man. To... <laughs> so, I like that they're okay. they're like um, sort of expanding the the UG the UFs the underground facilities, um, and making them all look a little bit more individual. Mm -hmm. What I one thing I'm uh, looking sort of. I, I want to see more levels underground, right? Like right now, there's just the one level. You go down, there's one level. I'd like to see more than that. Yeah. Oh, me too, especially because when you actually go and like look at the elevator, you can actually see that there are other levels below. Like, they're there. Uh, I just don't think they're being utilized right now. Um, which actually made me happy to see. I was glad that they actually do have 
more of that structure so they can expand them in the future. It's such a lovely looking game. It is indeed. Our number one comment. Um, <clears throat> over the years about uh, about this game. Every time we look at it, it's gorgeous. You should see what I'll do for money, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So, um any thoughts on this system? More? Yes. Agreed. I um I really do I really do love that they're using the tool that the players are going to use um for building. I think that will really help with making the player's version powerful and, you know, feel complete. It's going to be interesting how ray trace, if, if they can bring in ray tracing and how much time or if any time that that's going to save. Because they do such a great job with the lighting as is. Oh, I know. That's um. I mean, they. Yeah, I. I think they will just because CIG tends to tends to try mm. to be at the cutting edge, but they are going to have to be very judicious with its use because they don't have a lot of performance to give away. You know what I mean? Um, it is a. It is so. such a large play area. The ray tracing, if it was just if, I don't know, I assume if it was just implemented and like, yep, yeah, whatever, ray tracing in the whole game, that's just how, how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta be pretty judicious with what you use it for. Um, I'm wondering if they're gonna try and have it take over the global illuminate, illumination, but that's a big task, so I don't know. I don't know. We will have to see what their plans are for the future. They said they can do it. That's gonna be it. I'm that's interesting. I want to... Mm. Also, JJ, I mean, if Trey Racing isn't in the game, it's... It, we should just quit this podcast right now. We need Trey <laughs> Racing. We have... They spent, like, years on the cafeterias. We better have Trey Racing. I agree. I want to see my procedurally generated fried eggs That's properly right. under ray trace lighting. Thank we you. have seen... The only way I'll do it. Oh, under ray trace lighting. I like that. <clears throat> oh man with ray traced flames under the frying pan and I want to take small bits of damage from hot oil spitting out at me as these eggs fry yep but I mean yeah I mean th this is also an interesting sign of the fact that they did very slyly mentioned that this is going to be in players' hands or a version of it. Of mm -hmm. you know, so uh, what's going on with that pioneer then, CIG? Mm? <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about that? Uh, well, Citizens Con is coming. You that's mm. Mm. that's a heck of a tease. Well, I don't know. I know, I know, I know. If they're going to talk about it, that's where they're going to talk about that's it. That's true, yeah. That's true, that, yeah. Two months' time when we've all forgotten that they slyly mentioned that, and they're just like, hey, Pioneer. Um, yeah, I could see that for sure. Yeah, Um. and they have been talking about, uh, I mean, they've been sort of giving hints about the whole you know that they're working on the on the um player structure creation type of deal for a while now right back to when they were first working on the the homesteads right so, so. Pie, pie in the sky idea right mm -hmm. what if like 
let let's go with the idea of Citizen Con. They say, yep, Pioneer, maybe out in a year or so, or within a year from now. Um, do you think that's going to tie in with uh, Pyro coming out? And they're going to be like, okay, so Pyro is going to be fairly blank. Go build. I could see. Yeah, and that would sure. be a nice test. I, we know there isn't a lot, of, a lot of infrastructure in Pyro, so that would make a lot of sense. Stanton mm. is Stanton is that's one of the things too. Like they started with one of the more populated systems. Yeah. Um Stanton is very heavily built up for Star Citizen systems. Um Pyro is not. It is a lawless frontier. So uh it seems like a pretty quality place to uh just start your own little base, although fairly dangerous, I would imagine. I I have to wonder if they're going to avoid allowing base building yet when they get Pyro. Um, I feel like they need more than just one system. Pyro is a bit too lawless, and people are going to get really angry when their bases get destroyed. I think they're still ha- going to have to figure out... Um, what was it? I remember playing, I think it was Conan. Uh, one of the, like, Conan yeah. uh, uh, survival game. Yeah, the Conan XL. Yeah, which your bases on a server persisted, whether you were online or not. Which meant people could just show up and destroy your base, and there was nothing you could do because you were offline. That's not very fun. Honestly, that is not fun. There might Not be a really, very small you subset. Be, you can't that, be online. You can't be online all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I I feel like they're gonna have to figure out some things before they, um, open base creation to people, and I feel like um, Pyro is gonna be a little bit early. You're gonna need a lot more than just automated turret protection, and. The yep. AI is not up to scratch right now for relying on your base to be protected by it. Yeah, no, definitely not. No. Um, Alex the Jew, that is a good point. Bases are going to be a lot harder to find in Star Citizen, but some of that is just that our ability to scan right now is ass. When scanning improves and you get ships that are devoted entirely to scanning i i I think there will be ways to find bases right like it's Mm -hmm. i I still think there's a problem of leaving all bases persistent all the time um and and honestly even if you're allowed to put up turrets and stuff as defenses a turret's gonna do nothing against um what uh Orbital the, what are they yeah like a size a eight gun? bomb just dropped on your yeah. your your place. Oh, retali- from... I mean, yeah, retali- retaliators are designed for that purpose yeah. to blow blow up structures, and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it, right? A turret won't yeah. stop that. So, I I think they're gonna have a lot of balancing to figure out with player structures. Um, I, I, I liken back to one of the only games that I've ever played, the only MMOs that I've ever played that actually allowed this, which was Star Wars Galaxies. And even there it was, there were like areas that you could build in and areas that you couldn't build in. And I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see in Star Citizen. I don't know how they're going to go about it. Um. The problem is, but then there's also some really cool gameplay to allowing bases to be built and destroyed, and then you can find the ruins of bases too. Like there's, there's so much going on. I there's, there's a, just so much going there's on. There's a fine line of balance that they so need to find saying. where it doesn't feel completely unfair that you're while you sleep, which is a human necessity, or you don't want to log into SC that day your base is not just going to be completely vaporized off the face of the map, but also is available for other players to be like, let's uh, see what he's got. I'm just glad it's not my fucking job. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah, no, this is a, it's a hard bit of gameplay to design, right? This is where the gameplay designers are. I mean, it's for orcs. Making their money, you know? There's the intrinsic problem with bounty hunting as well, of if I've got a bounty of one million new EC on me, what's to stop me logging into an ult and killing my main account to claim the bounty for myself? It's another one of those weird things. It's a meta game that they need to combat, and I don't know what the solution to that would be either. Yep. I suppose it's tied I... to the IP or the account, but that seems a bit overhanded. And Alex, um, they have talked not That's about fine. bases for orgs, but uh, cap ships. Like, uh, I think it, it, Idris, the Idris doesn't despawn when you leave it. At least I, I can't remember if it's the Idris, but some of them don't, for sure. I think the Javelin yeah. definitely doesn't. Yeah. I think the Idris is the smallest ship that doesn't despawn. You mean largest? No, smallest no, ship that doesn't. The smallest. Yeah. Right. Oh, so every Idris, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything, everything bigger than an Idris does not despawn when you log out. Right. Yeah. Because and they're gigantic capital ships. Or maybe, and and you you might be right, Alex. It might be javelin and above. Um, I really they, wish they like, stuck with the original concept for the javelin. Made me sad when they abandoned it. I just, I could see certain i i can't remember what the last thing they said actually is i could i can't see bases being persistent but i think at one point they said that that orgs might be o able to own a station right that's a that's a thought in the future that was part of why they were making the modular uh, yeah one part of why they're making the modular um space station building pieces so that Again, hopefully, the ability to expose it to the players at some point in the future. Yep. But if an org can own a station, that station won't despawn, right? No. So orgs, I, I think things like station size, large ships, those orgs will have to, you know, take shifts, defend, be be ready, right? But, like, smaller bases, and I don't think they're going to allow us to make, like, cities, Right. No. So no, and it's and that's entirely because of um, because of um, performance reasons. Yeah. Well, it's like Fallout seventy six. There's you you put down your camp to build your base, but there is then a radius around your base that is created that nobody else can build their base in. Yep. Right. That makes sense. And I think you'll probably have something like that in Star Citizen, where you can build your base, but there's only, like, it's like this a is the... Out zone? Either a keep-out zone, or, like, you know, you're only allowed to have so many so many buildings in a land claim, or, like, like they're gonna have to find some way to limit it, because otherwise, uh, I mean... Can I, can I tell you yeah. a story? Yeah. Um... Hands up if anybody's played this game. I played an, uh, an MMO a long time ago called A Tale in the Desert. Um, and uh, it was a fairly small MMO, but it was a lot of fun to play uh, because it was... The graphics weren't great, but the game systems were really cool. Um, and it was made by two people. And so, and there were... The player base was small enough you actually got to talk to the two people who were making the game. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But at one point, I was part of one of the largest, um, like, guilds, basically, in the game. And we had basically built a city at one of the river crossings. This is actually, like, the game is based in Egypt. And we had basically built a city at one of the river crossings. And, uh, yeah, when you like ran within like draw distance of our of our city your frame rate went down by like 75 <laughs> percent. so they had to like change the way the game worked so that you couldn't play structures very closely together um yeah it was pretty funny 
I I think I've told this story before, but this is uh, I think my favorite MMO story. Uh, Puzzle Pirates. I don't know if you've heard of Puzzle mm-hmm. Pirates, but Puzzle Pirates was a Java-based MMO where you were pirates and everything you did was done through like little puzzle games. Like there was Tetris to sail and there was like, um, like again, Tetris to like put wood planks together in to fill holes when your ship was damaged. And there was like, matching little balls like there it was just mini games but everything was done with these little mini games anyway um there was a player run economy and one of my friends commander llama purchased a sword shop building mm-hmm. yeah, swords i know this story mm-hmm. so the way it worked was he got to set the price for the it. sword and he got to set the price that he would pay people to work at his shop to build the swords. So people would buy the sword, would pay money to buy the sword, and then other people would work at his shop and get paid, and the number of people working at the shop would determine how quickly the swords... It was, like, really in-depth and honestly kind of amazing. Um, but, and this is honestly where all of... 90% of my views of capitalism come from, is... <laughs> He decided that the best way to do it would be one to this pay people. Well, he he paid people really well to build the swords, so he had very little profit margin, and he sold the swords for very cheap. So everyone one wanted to work at his store, and two wanted to buy from his store because he paid the most for labor and he sold for the cheapest because he was it was a you know the lowest profit margin, and. He did so well that he was able to buy, and this was in a beta of the game, was able to buy the largest ship in the game that literally no one aside from the devs had ever, like, owned. He was the only, like, he bought this, I don't even know what it was, but the giant ship, we actually went on it. Oh, it was impossible for us to sail but he had so much money anyway eventually the devs actually contacted him and were like we have to get you to stop because you've completely broken the economy of the game um because like nobody could like everyone was trying to compete and it was just like he had broken the entire economy of this mmo just by saying i'm gonna pay people well and sell my stuff for less and that that was it the capitalism of the the mmo broke and i think it's i don't know i i think i i always think gleam in his eye (laughs) i think there's some beauty to that moment you know there is definitely (laughs) beauty to that moment you can see it he's plotting to burn little bits of paper in the palace right now um, I don't know, but but honestly, I hope that Star Citizen allows for things like that, where you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're only going to be ten percent of the economy. Yeah, that's but they are. They it is a really intuitive way to. It is a it is a very natural way to control, um, like totally crashing the there, economy. Like that. There, there will still be people that are like Command Alarma that are able to corner a market and just become stupidly rich mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's fair you know if someone's going to be able to put in that much work to get that much in star citizen then yeah fair i love it oh, I, I love it all right I, love, I loved puzzle pirates we uh we had a really popular guild popular because we had so much money because of commander llama uh and we were the burlap yeah. lemurs and then, <laughs> then decades later, years years later, uh, one of my friends' group logged great on, name. just just to see if the guild still existed, um, and it did, uh, and it was a furry guild. That's a that's a change. <laughs> it was great. Congratulations! Uh, congratulations on founding a furry guild. We found oh, a furry guild, and I am a okay so with that. Funny. 
Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> good memories, good uh, times. In the early days of the internet. That's right. Yeah. Um, the man. A Tale of the Desert was an interesting one because it was definitely like a niche uh, game, but um, it, it was interesting. Like, it was really big, and there wasn't really a fast way to move. You ran. That was it. Enjoy running. That's, Init that's your, initial that's... release. Two thousand and three. Um, yep, that's about right. Um. Uh, and uh it was kind of cool because the game was, world was big enough and you moved slow enough the like you could go and visit people and they like the area they were in and the way that they played was different and they had like different things to trade because they lived in a different place like, it actually was big enough that people like didn't wander the whole game world because it was just too big do you know what other game came out in 2003 and is still going? Uh, Eve Online? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. Puzzle Pirates is on Steam now. Amazing. Oh no, don't we talk about the Lama. Gonna be playing on his, and we know what David's going to be playing on his uh, Steam Deck. Uh, it's not supported on Steam Deck, unfortunately, but, but get this. Uh, System requirements. Processor, 500 megahertz. Hard Processor dis needed. Hard dis one. <laughs> hard disk space, 100 megabytes. Wow. Oh. Hard disk wow. required, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Processor. Yeah, you need one, Len. <laughs> 100 yeah, megabytes. I haven't seen a game that small in a very long time. Processor requirement any. Just any. Oh, you need to have at least you need to have at least two hundred and fifty six megabytes of memory. Oh shit. <laughs> well that's it. Wow. Yeah, so one hundred. You, you can see it, you can see it. He's like add to cart, purchase for myself. It, it's free to play. It's actually free to play. It's free to play. Oh even that even mm. better. Love it. That's oh. cool. When did when a tail in the desert shut down? Do, do, do. Uh, as you can tell, we've we've reached the end of Star Citizen stuff to talk about, and they're going off on. Oh games. my it's two god! Two weeks, and we still managed to keep it into the same amount of space. Oh my! Is god. it still up, Eric? I think it's still running. <laughs> they the way that the game runs is that they have um they have uh basically tellings, so they they tell the story. And it runs for a year or two, and then they, and then it all like resets back to the beginning again. It's cool. Um, they are on tail ten, and it started in twenty twenty one. Nice. Wow. I cannot believe that game. I I played it at the beginning, like I was in tail one, I think. So we're talking like two thousand three. Um, same same year as Puzzle Pirates. Still up, but City of Villains is gone. That's a good question. That. City of Heroes and City of Villains were so good. They were. That was that was my first MMO, and that that was that became the standard for me. I couldn't adapt to any other MMO apart from me for some reason. <clears throat> Ashram's call was ninety nine. Damn. Oh, play it. Oh, well, still play it. Yeah. Run though. That's pretty impressive. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, we got to talk about that because it was really cool. Um, a Tale in the Desert had, um, again, small enough game with direct access to the devs. There was a system in the game by which you could, uh, the players could make laws. You can craft a law and have it voted on by the players. And yes. if it passed, the devs, the devs had to implement it if they could. <laughs> well, it was really cool and really weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Wow. So what have you guys all been playing for July? 
tell us in the comments or in the chat, I mean. Yes, tell us what Warhammer 40k games you've been playing, please. <laughs> I bought Battlefleet so, Gothic Armada 2, and it crashes a lot. Good game, though. <laughs> it crashes a lot, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, nice, Alex. That's wicked. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance is such a good game. I uh, Sorry. really love that game. I just had a thought. Based Ooh, on like what you were on. saying... Based on what you were saying, Eric, because we have seen some talk, like, there will be politics in Star Citizen. We've act when we voted on politicians once, at least, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I don't think it'll be as, like, hands-on as you're talking about, but... Not at all. No. But we should still be able to vote on politicians in the game who yep. will then enact policies in the game, right? Like, we'll probably get their platform. Yeah, that's that's where, that's how they're doing it in Star Citizen. Yeah. yeah, which is cool. But you've got to be a citizen, haven't you? Yes. Which means completing Squadron 42, or at least that's what it used to mean. It may still that's what it still used, that. That's what it used to mean. It's still that, but they have... Tour of Duty on Clendathu or something. I you still get it through completing squadron or, or I think they said a long time ago that there are other ways in game but yeah completing squadron guarantees it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's starship troopers right yeah yeah that's what I thought yeah dodge got it dodge got it that's another good game that Amazing. I've been playing Starship Poopers. Is it good? It's good. It's good. 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 I gotta grab that. Shoot some, shoot yes. some aliens. 16 players in your team. You can have that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. I've been playing, awesome. uh, I've been playing, I honestly haven't played a ton. Um, well, you have been moving gigantic houses, so. Yeah. Uh, except I've been playing so much Tears of the Kingdom. Um, are, are there this, tears in the kingdom? There are. There are actual tears or in the kingdom. There are also, there are both. Funnily enough, there are both tears and tears. Um, this year <laughs> is fucked. Yep. Best RPG this year is going to be a war. <laughs> yeah but like <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 no, Tears of the Kingdom uh, Rogue we're Trader getting the way. Starfield uh, Armored Core 6 is coming out in like is that an RPG? Uh, it's. I think it's an ARPG well it's like Elden Ring oh okay I don't, maybe I don't I don't really know it's I think it's a bit more actiony but like the the number of high profile amazing games that have come out already um jedi survivor uh for you know. like this year is insane yep this year is insane i just like every award show assuming starfield is good every award show is going to be uh, Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, or Starfield, it's going to be a yeah. bloodbath. <laughs> I don't even know what oh, wins there. Man. I mean, I I think Tears of the Kingdom, but oh man. That's fair, Alex. I'm, I'm not huge on those sorts of games myself, where it's just everything is basically left-click or just right-click. I find that very... It takes me out of the game. In saying that, that's exactly what Rogue Trader is. <laughs> Excuse me, in Diablo, there's a lot of 1, 2, 3, 4, Q, and Shift, and Alt, as yep. well. Yep. Lots of it. Actually, I've lots been playing Diablo. Yeah. Lots of space bar. Lots all of space bar. Oh, uh, yeah. woo, space Love bar a good bit of space bar action. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta hit that space bar. 
One of my favorite things in Diablo is getting boots that give me extra dodge. Yes, you need extra dodge. <laughs> you get One of my favorite of things is video games. Yes, games are amazing. Just all of them. It's been a good year. It's been a good year for games. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if I... Was I talking about Battlebit here or was it a, about in the pre-show? We were talking about it here. Here? Oh, pre-show. I thought it was a pre-show. Pre-show, pre-show. Yeah. Battle okay. Bit is also great. I won't, I, won't, I won't go any length. Is that what we're calling it when you, we get together nobody's... and just, you know, shoot shit before we go live? Absolutely. The pre-show. Yes. Yeah, that sounds, the, pro- the, that sounds professional. The... Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a pre-show. professional term. <laughs> um, Battle Bit is really good. Um, go play it. It is a large number of players. Basically, basically it's Battlefield, except good. Uh, graphics are very basic, but the actual gameplay is really, really solid. Um, they have like full destruction, and the vehicles play really well. It's cool, great game. <clears throat> I will play literally any game. I just like games. I, I don't know. I. Star Citizen's going to be hard to get into. In what sense? Um, in the sense that... In the sense that I couldn't get into um, Assassin's Creed um, Valhalla, really, or into the Greece one. Uh, odyssey no 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 when i say you can't get into it as in you can't immerse yourself in it or you can't get into how to play the game no in that for me at least like there's so much scope and i i don't think it's going to be a problem with squadron i think squadron is going to be excellent and i can't wait but i think like at least for a while, because I don't think Star Citizen is really going to have... Like, most MMOs have, like, an opening. And, like, it it starts, you know, simple and small. And you've got, like, an opening area that's, like, a tutorial. Like, it it, it leads you through. And Star Citizen's not going to have that, at least for a long time. And I have a problem when being thrown into a game that is just so immensely massive i mean they have it to... like north and north, north north end trooper said that yeah they have a tutorial now they had a tutorial and but i see what you're saying at the same time of you know how do i mine i would imagine at some point they can put in a tutorial for that you know oh, if yeah. you want to Absolutely. learn how to do it but maybe not but at least but that's that's it's... the beauty of youtube but it's not even, and I, I will, I refuse to go to YouTube and watch tutorials. I will not watch tutorials because I, I, I will read one, but I will not oh, listen. Okay. I will not watch a tutorial. I hate it more than I hate uh, the people at my high school that used to, you know, throw me in lockers and shove my head in the toilets uh, i have i have wow, so much lot hatred hate. yes yes i think that youtube hey, you is all right, David? horrible no i hate it you can't <laughs> find anything amazing. you can't find anything just written down anymore everything's yes we're yeah. gonna i'm gonna talk to you about this how to do this on on this game and you start by Clicking oh, I, I don't like the opposite. And... It's the opposite ones that I don't like, where it's like, "Hey, it's your boy here," and I'm like, "You ain't my boy." I don't know. Yeah, like Darsh, what up, game is your space. boy Starbanger XX yeah. with another tutorial today? We're gonna talk about how to it, get it start. I, you I don't up like that first out. It, crosshair. They're the and people. Then you click mouse button and you get a headshot. They're the people who have the personalities of Saturday morning kids TV show presenters that failed the entry exam. 
<laughs> oh, amazing. I love it. Anyway. Um, we are old there's... and curmudgeon oh, though, so. I am, I am such a friggin' curmudgeon. I did my lawn twice this week. What what happened to it? What does that make you a curmudgeon? The second time. <laughs> I well, that the, raises honestly, many questions here. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just wondering. None what, of them you were like, prepared for. How many drugs were you feeding your grass? <laughs> no, and I just uh, because I'm an eco nerd, I I have a, a battery powered mower. And oh. the if you're an eco nerd, out. why are you cutting grass? Let it grow. You need a Let forest. It grow. Let it grow. <laughs> did your lawn? Did you use protect? That's a good I question. Can't see my face I think he anymore. soiled himself doing it. Oh. But it was a dirty time. It was a right sod. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, it's a good question, Alex. Why have grass? Um. Well, because it's there when I bought the house, and I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. I want it. I, I want Canada, to plant plant get, uh, wildflowers. If I was in Canada, I get rid of all the grass, and I'd only grow grass. Well, I know that. You know, uh, bees need our help. Did you know that in some places in Arizona, entomologists are really worried because it's gotten so hot that not only are the bees dropping dead. But their beehives are melting. That uh, doesn't even slightly surprise me. It's Arizona. It is That's... literally I hell. I didn't even know there were bees in Arizona. <laughs> there aren't any more. They're very adventurous <laughs> bees. <laughs> it, it, uh, who, who was it who came up with the... Um, is it called the bee theory or something? Where if bees are removed from the food chain the ecosystem there are serious oh, we're fucked. repercussions of... yep yeah as far as we know we're screwed yeah they are they are <laughs> they yeah. they are the only things that pollinate like the, well, there, there are, are other things, things that pollinate, pollinate a little bit but nowhere nothing near pollinates. what they yeah. do not nowhere near how much oh they do. gosh yeah. i want i want both of those temperatures we haven't gone below 28 at night Yesterday we hit 40 oh, for the first time, officially. That's <laughs> nothing disgusting. To, nothing to worry about, Falistan. Nothing August. at all. Wow. Yeah. Just Phoenix has been 100 degrees for 30 days straight. Oh, boy. That's insane. That's, that, is, that is not livable. No. I like mountains. Mountains are pretty. They are. I like mountains, too. That's why I live beside some. Actually, I live beside some because I grew up here. But I, <laughs> I stay, li I stay living beside them because they're really nice. <laughs> I haven't seen a mountain, but I've seen a volcano. You've, You've never, never seen, seen a, mountain? a mountain. You live in Japan. You haven't gone to see oh, Mount Fuji. I like this mountain. Oh wait, that's Mount a volcano. Fuji isn't a mountain. Oh, actually, it's a volcano. Like whole, yeah, that's the, the volcano whole, I've whole seen. But, but hang on, system. hang on. That actually, hang on. you know what? I had that moment. Go ahead. It's called Mount Fuji, Doesn't, not well, volcano all, all Fuji. Yeah, it's to make it's to make people who oh, live in Tokyo oh, feel oh, safer oh, from this oh, volcano okay. that is very, very, <laughs> very overdue to blow up at any day. Oh, that sounds fun. Um, so it, what's fun is when yeah, they tell you great... that with this big smile on their face, and they're like, Oh, it's <laughs> really overdue, it's gonna blow up any day now. And, oh, it's gonna be great. And you're like, Oh, he's totally what? screwed. Um, I had that, I had that epiphany when I was in Iceland. It's not like it's one of those things you don't really like actively think about much, and then you know, it just bursts into your brain. You know, I'm there for I was there for a week and about like four days into my trip i'm looking around at the island as we you know we were out in the wilderness there and i'm like this is all just a volcano yep the whole goddamn thing the whole island i'm just standing on a huge volcano <laughs> uh, darn oh <laughs> yeah. i guess you really would be up shit creek <laughs> Oh my god, that was beautiful. <laughs>
that wow i oh how do i wow. how do i like i can't i need to like st uh, anyway it doesn't matter i can't word i can't word right now that was very good that was very good oh uh, vol canoe Yes, I, uh, oh, I've never been to a Vol canoe myself. I'm always very afraid of Vol canoes exploding if I happen to walk upon them. Oh, Vol canoe? Man. Isn't that just an electrified canoe? Oh, no, wow. it's a flying one. It vols. That's... Vol canoe. Helps. It helps if you wow. know French. I do, at some. How much? Petite. <laughs> yeah. J'ai parlé une petite française, which I know is the incorrect sentence, but it gets the point across. <laughs> <laughs> tu parles un peu? C'est bon? Uh-oh, oh, we've, we've turned into a... <laughs> Give it more. We've turned into a... <laughs> a French... A Fuck. <laughs> Québécois. Excusez-moi. Oui. Anyway, um, I think we should stop this now because clearly, I mean, it's. I mean, I think we're. I think this is the best show we've ever done. I don't know what you're talking about. I've got to learn how showed. to do that, Dodge. I've got to learn how to say that. I can only speak a little French. Imperfect French. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I've got it. That that life goal. Pamplemousse. <laughs> Baguette. Omelette du fromage. Cheese on. Où est la bibliothèque? Um. À la Flight of the Con <laughs> Flight of the Concords. Yeah. Great song. J'ai joué la matar. My oh, oh, my oh. accent went a bit off there. I'm sorry. Um. Okay. We we should. Uh, oh, we should stop. Oh boy. Thanks everybody for watching. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm gonna call it here yeah, because uh, we have clearly descended into another form madness. of madness. Also, I'm fishy lavash. Cool. Fishy lavash. Anyway, <laughs> I thought in your general direction, your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Now go away or I shall taunt you a second time. You lost the accent at the end there. Yeah, well, I've never been very good at accents. Yeah. <laughs> at the uh, Volcanoes of Madness. <laughs> Damn it, I was just about... <laughs> Eris and the Volcanoos. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Look, the peak of Look, up realization. in the sky, riding it's on those it. winged horses, it's the Volcanoos. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh what do God. you call what do you call a large group of Volcanoos? Is it an eruption of Volcanoos? It better be. A magma. A magma <laughs> Volcanoos. <laughs> Goodbye.